France has long believed that they are a superior nation, particularly during the time when they had colonies. In one of their West African colonies called Senegal, they introduced a policy called assimilation in the late 19th century. This policy aimed to make the indigenous population French citizens by erasing cultural and social differences between the conquerors and the colonized. Senegalese people could get the same legal rights, privileges and opportunities as any French citizen if they embraced the French language, culture and values. Education was essential in this project. So the French built schools and promoted the French language to create a new generation of French Senegalese. This policy was inhumane and considered Africans inferior. It was based on a belief system that Europeans, especially the French, thought they were superior to Africans culturally and technologically. They wanted to transform the African communities they encountered to reflect European norms, values, and institutions. This often included efforts to replace indigenous languages and cultures with European ones, impose European-style education systems, and promote Christianity as a tool for social control and moral elevation. The economic aspect of the civilizing mission was important. European colonial powers aspired to exploit the African continent's tremendous resources mainly raw commodities and labor. They defended their presence in Africa by stating that they were providing economic progress, infrastructure, and modernization. However, the economic gains were disproportionately directed toward the colonial powers, leaving indigenous communities poor and dispossessed. The French colonial endeavor in Africa was a prime illustration of the civilizing mission at work. The French government implemented efforts to integrate indigenous populations into French culture and society, with the ultimate goal of generating French Africans. This assimilationist concept was used to justify French authority by implying that African nations were incapable of self-government and hence needed the direction of their European rulers. Many African villages, however, resisted the civilizing mission with tenacity. Indigenous peoples frequently kept their cultural practices, languages, and traditions, and they typically rejected European attempts to impose alien ideals and institutions on them. This resistance took many forms, ranging from grassroots movements and revolutions to the emergence of African nationalist leaders seeking to oppose colonial power and proclaim their people's rights. The legacy of the civilizing mission continues to be a complicated and contentious component of colonial history. It had a profound influence on African cultures, affecting post-colonial identities, cultural dynamics, and political ideologies. As African nations attained independence in the mid-20th century, they wrestled with the historical legacy of being perceived as inferior, seeking to reclaim their identities and express their power on the world stage. The belief in African inferiority and the civilizing mission serves as a stark reminder of the deeply ingrained prejudices that have shaped history, while also highlighting the resilience and agency of African peoples who resisted colonial subjugation and eventually embarked on the path to self-determination. Senegal's four communes, San Louis, Dakar, Rufisk, and Gore, have a distinctive position in history as pioneering areas where the French colonial administration applied its assimilation strategy. These communes, each with its historical significance, were crucial to the larger story of French colonialism and the assimilationist drive in Africa. Saint Louis was the earliest French town in Senegal, dating back to the 17th century, and located on an island near the mouth of the Senegal River. It is notable for being one of the four original communes where the French launched their assimilation policy. 
This approach attempted to convert the indigenous populace into French citizens by instilling in them the French language, culture, and values. Saint-Louis was the epicenter of the assimilationist movement and the historic city served as a model for the French ambition of building a French African civilization. Dakar, Senegal's capital and one of the country's founding four communes is an important site in the history of French colonialism. In 1902, it was designated as the capital of French West Africa, confirming its importance as a center for French administration and assimilation attempts. Dakar's diversified and dynamic populace served as a laboratory for French cultural influence, education, and administration. It functioned as a focal point for both the execution and opposition to assimilationist programs. Raufiske, Raufiske, one of the four original communes, is a beach town near Dakar. It contributed to the growth of Senegal's trade and transportation networks. Assimilation efforts were especially obvious in Rufisk, where the French attempted to instill their culture, language, and values in the indigenous populace. It demonstrates the colonial project's widespread influence, even in minor settlements. Gore. Because of its tragic history as a transatlantic slave trade center, the island of Gore, off the coast of Dakar, is possibly the most symbolic of the four communes. The Maison des Esclaves, meaning House of Slaves on Gore Island, is a poignant reminder of the human agony encountered during the African slave trade. The French utilized Gore during the colonial period to help establish their position in the region and spread their cultural and educational impact. These four communes represent the complexities of French colonization and its impact on Senegal. French assimilation efforts aimed at converting indigenous communities into French citizens were met with different degrees of acceptance, opposition, and adaptability. The imposition of the French language, religion, and school system on the Senegalese people left an enduring legacy in Senegal, as it did in many other parts of Africa. This colonial experience has far-reaching and long-lasting consequences for Senegal's cultural, social, and educational landscape. Language. The imposition of the French language was one of the most prominent characteristics of French colonialism in Senegal. The French government made encouraging the use of the French language a major component of its strategy. French was used in schools, government institutions, and official documents. The objective was to facilitate colonists' communication and administration, but it also served to marginalize local languages and cultures. This linguistic program had a significant impact on Senegalese society. It produced a linguistic barrier between those who learned French fluently and those who did not frequently along class and educational access lines. Furthermore, it contributed to a cultural shift as younger generations became more impacted by French culture as they were taught in the French language. Religion, the propagation of Christianity, was another aspect of the French colonial legacy in Senegal. By the civilizing mission doctrine, the French authority aimed to convert the mostly Muslim Senegalese population to Christianity, primarily through missionary operations. While they did not convert the population forcibly, the presence of missionaries and the establishment of Christian institutions such as schools and churches were intended to exert cultural influence. This religious dimension resulted in a one-of-a-kind interplay of faiths in Senegal. While many Senegalese remained Muslim, a sizable number also converted to Christianity. This religious diversity has contributed to Senegal's particular religious landscape, which includes both Islamic and Christian traditions. Education. The French established a school system in Senegal to instill French principles and culture. 
the founding of French language schools was crucial in spreading French culture and ideals. However, disparities were common in this educational system. Only a few Senegalese have access to quality education, limiting their possibilities for social mobility. The educational system has two effects. On the one hand, it produced an educated elite influenced by French culture and ideas. Some of these people went on to become leaders in the fight for independence and the establishment of a Senegalese national identity. On the other hand, the system exacerbated inequities in access to social and economic possibilities by creating a barrier between the educated and the uneducated. In Senegal, the legacy of French imposition of language, religion, and education is complex and multifaceted. It left an indelible effect on the country's cultural and linguistic landscape, affecting the dynamics of post-colonial Senegal. While the French language is still widely spoken in Senegal, the country has also succeeded in retaining its rich cultural legacy and traditions. French colonial policy in its overseas colonies, notably Africa, relied heavily on the promotion of French culture and values through the media and the arts. This cultural and intellectual outreach had multiple purposes, including not only maintaining colonial power, but also exporting French culture and projecting French influence. The French colonial authority extensively used the media and publications to spread French culture and ideals. Newspapers, periodicals, and radio broadcasts, which were frequently controlled or influenced by colonial authorities, were critical means of transmitting the French language, ideas, and news. French periodicals were used to tell stories that depicted France as a smart and enlightened nation. They frequently emphasized the advantages of assimilation and adopting French culture, education and literature. The educational system was an effective means of transmitting French culture. The curriculum of colonial schools included French literature, history and philosophy. French literary classics and intellectual writings, for example, were introduced to Senegalese students. This educational strategy attempted to instill French ideals and concepts in conquered populations, ultimately influencing their worldview. The arts and cultural expression, the arts including theater, music and visual arts, played an important role in the spread of French culture. In colonial capitals such as Dakar, French cultural institutions such as theaters and galleries were constructed to serve as platforms for the performance and display of French artistic expression. French plays and music performances drew a large audience and taught locals to the intricacies of French culture and innovation. Language and linguistic influence. The French language played an important role in cultural transmission. The colonial authorities encouraged people to use French in their daily lives, official papers, and public communication. They wanted to supplant local languages with French, which had ramifications for cultural identity and linguistic variety. The widespread use of French had a long-lasting impact on the linguistic landscape of colonial countries. Cultural exchange. French culture promotion was not a one-way highway. While the French attempted to impose their cultural ideals on the indigenous populace, they also engaged in cultural exchange. This interchange frequently resulted in the synthesis of French and indigenous cultural components, resulting in distinct expressions in art, music, and even gastronomy. The promotion of French culture and ideals through the media and the arts was essentially a soft power instrument. While the goal was to justify and solidify French colonial control, it also had the unexpected consequence of spawning cultural hybrids and raising knowledge of the world outside colonial borders. This cultural contact and exposure to French culture would, over time, contribute to the creation of a generation of indigenous intellectuals and leaders 
who would play critical roles in the struggle for independence and the recognition of their own cultural identities. The colonial era, defined by European powers' rule over wide regions, had a significant impact on indigenous communities' perceptions of their own culture in comparison to the culture of the colonizers. The French, like other colonial powers, used numerous techniques to influence African views and ideas, leading some people to believe that French culture was superior. This is a complicated process that is influenced by a variety of circumstances. Cultural hegemony, colonial powers, notably the French, frequently exercised cultural hegemony. They ruled over educational institutions, the media, and other means of cultural diffusion. Because of their supremacy, colonial officials were able to establish the narrative about their culture's superiority. Control over education was especially effective in shaping young minds and instilling appreciation for French culture. Indoctrination through school. The school system built by the French in their colonies was critical in promoting the belief in the superiority of French culture. The curriculum was created to promote French literature, history, and language, while undermining or marginalizing local languages, histories, and cultural practices. Graduates of this system tended to regard French culture as intelligent and progressive. Influence of the media. French-controlled media had an important part in portraying French culture as superior. Newspapers, Radio broadcasts and magazines were used to promote the notion that France was the pinnacle of civilization and that adopting French habits and ideals was a sign of progress and modernity. Social and economic success, the French frequently equated cultural and linguistic adaptation with social and economic success. Those who embraced French culture had a higher chance of obtaining important professions, access to higher education, and social mobility. This established an incentive for people to adopt French culture, even if it meant abandoning their indigenous history. Colonial subjugation. A crucial component was the power dynamic between colonizers and colonized. The imposition of colonial control, backed up by military and political power, fostered the notion of French cultural superiority. Resistance to colonial control was frequently met with violence, emphasizing the perceived might and legitimacy of French culture. It is critical to note that Africans' confidence in cultural superiority was not universal. Many indigenous peoples retained a strong sense of cultural identity and cultural assimilation was widely opposed. There were also individuals who, although assimilating features of French culture, maintained a subtle and composite sense of identity. The impact of colonial era beliefs of cultural superiority can still be seen in many post-colonial cultures. It continues to shape these regions' language landscapes, educational institutions, and cultural dynamics. Individuals and communities who have expressed their own cultural identities sought to recover their heritage and contribute to a more balanced awareness of diverse cultural traditions must also be recognized. The impact of colonial era beliefs of cultural superiority can still be seen in many post-colonial cultures. It continues to shape these regions' language landscapes, educational institutions, and cultural dynamics. All of these have undoubtedly contributed to the tension between France and its post-colonial states. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a sub, and we'll see you in the next one.